Morning. Oh, good morning, and welcome to the McCormick Sessions. Um, I am DJ Barbecue, and I am standing next to Simon the Butcher, easily one of the best butchers on the planet, the team captain for the British uh, Thank butchering you, sir. team. Thank you, Yes, it's a true story for my sins. Yep. Um, straight back to DJ Barbecue, though, the master of the grill. Um, we've got some serious stuff to do today. We have been challenged by McCormick to do uh, a battle. A battle royale, if you will. A battle royale. I don't eat, my recipes are so delicious, I don't need meat. I'm going veggie and vegan. But Butcher Boy, he's got to rely on his crutch called of course, meat. Of course, come on. We'll be, we'll be looking at sustainable foods. We'll be looking at using pieces of meat better in dishes so we don't have to use masses of protein. But yes, we need protein. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on. I, yeah, I'm quite jealous. Anyway, um, <laughs> you guys can ask questions whenever you want during the process. Uh, they can be, they, they're anonymous. Um, we're going to save some time at the end to do a Q&A with you guys. But first, we've got four dishes each. I'm gonna kick off with the best dish, and then, you know, he'll try to battle me, and I'll battle back with a better recipe, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on the top ropes, throw down the hammer, and say, "Coming off the top ropes," and I'm gonna destroy. I'm gonna get a chair. Him and his appetite with awesome, delicious flavors. Um, flavors. And, and then at the end, guys, we're gonna go through recipes. Like Christian said, we're gonna do a Q and A, and then we're gonna put the recipes out for you, um, so the full recipes will be out there for you guys to dissect and do your own thing with. There we go, McCormick Sessions now. We have got a lot of uh, possibilities when you're grilling over live fire. So you've got the grill space here, but we've also got the indirect, the, the cooking in the coals, dirty cooking, coal roasting. So a lot of our recipes feature like coal roasted veg, um, dirty ash dirty salt. salsa, yeah, uh, coming I'm, up. I'm doing a charred uh, veg uh, ketchup. So I'm just gonna place some of our peppers. We've got some, um, some chilies, the and we've also got some onions. These We're gonna guys. go into the coals. They all have the natural wrappers. And you know, cooking in the coals with those wrappers, you just, you let them cool off, you peel them, and they get this kind of sweet, savory flavor. But yep. we need to start this battle. We do, we do. I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk going on here. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna start the festivities off if I can tie, find my, my yeah, top Chris, grill. Christian's up first. Um, what have we got, mate? What's, what's well, What have I got to go against? So, because I do a lot of veggies to go along with my meat, you know, I do love meat, but I also love my veggies. So, we have done- Brains. And oh, <laughs> it does look like brains. brains. I'm doing an Old Bay cauliflower shawarma. Now, the cool thing about Old Bay is, I've been working with this spice since I was about 17, because I used to work in all-you-can-eat crab houses in Ocean City, Maryland. This stuff's from Ellicott City, Maryland. I was born and raised in Maryland. Now, the Old Bay was named after a boat that would travel from Norfolk, Virginia, up the bay. Uh, it, we're, we're famous for our blue swimmer crabs. And this stuff is synonymous with crabs, but it goes on everything, yep. man. This stuff's killer on popcorn, chips, crisps, peanuts. Old Bay Meat. is awesome. Um, but it's funny, so it would travel from Norfolk, where my mom was from, and where my grandparents are from, where a lot of my food is from, including the last recipe, tomato pie, which I'm gonna annihilate you with. Um, but Old Bay is everything to me. So we've made an Old Bay kind of butter, like a confit. Um, that's the vegetarian version. Vegan, uh, you can go vegetable oil, yep. and then the Old Bay, and then you, so we blanch the, the cauliflower, for about What's your three, flame, to, dude? Three, three to four, thank you very much. He's that's the fire. butter, that's the butter, that's the butter. I did that on purpose, just to kind of put some <laughs> excitement and drama. Uh, thank you for that. That's right. I forgot there was a lot of butter there. I'm just fire safety, really. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so yeah, we blanch the cauliflower heads for uh, two to three minutes just to soften them up. Um, then we hit them with a, an Old Bay butter or olive oil for our vegan friends. And then we kind of hot roast it and we put some wood smoke in there. So we've got some special friends today. We've got- mm, I'm excited about this. So I used some hickory and some uh, wild cherry when I was doing some uh, some of the prep. This is a stave from a whiskey barrel. So we're gonna get nice. some flavor in there. And then these guys are gonna do their thing. And I'm just gonna keep basting them with that lovely butter. And then they're gonna turn out like this. These gorgeous roasted cauliflower heads. Beautiful. What always slightly annoys me about uh, like vegetarian and vegan cooking is it looks and smells so good. <laughs> and I'm not supposed to say that, you know, as, as the butcher. It's okay. So I've got some uh, coconut yogurt, dairy-free yogurt. So th these can be a great um, ingredient for like a pizza topping or a salad 
or just served on their own. So I've got some um, lovely organic coconut dairy-free yogurt. I'm gonna throw some pomegranate seeds on one of these bad boys and on the other. I'm gonna dip, let me dip. You, you can go and dip, you can dip. It's dairy-free, oh my goodness. Keep an eye on these bad boys for me. So we're oh getting God, a little- That's delicious. Isn't it? That's really delicious. I know, and that's dairy-free. And that's gonna cut against the Old Bay. There we go, we've got that savoriness nice. Old Bay. You know, paprika, celery salt, uh, you know, salt, pepper, and crushed bay leaves, a little bit of sugar. I mean, that's the flavor of home for me. Mm. And on this one, so that's gonna be how kind of sweet with the savory, and then we're gonna go spicy with that earthy. Let me describe Obey. If you guys have heard of the Black Keys, or maybe a Young Rolling Stones, if they were a flavor, they would be Obey. I've, I've got it's to borrow, the, what's her name? Oh, that's, that's Leo the Leopard. <laughs> I'm just borrowing Leo. So there we go, so we've got our spicy, savory, uh, Obey shawarma, cauliflower head, and this one's a bit more with the sweet, with the pomegranate, malat, pomegranate seeds, but they've kind of got that kind of sweet and sour vibe. So that is recipe one. So should we just like finish, because I, I win with that? I mean, uh, you know, I, I would eat that. That's, that's the worrying thing, but the good news is, is, is my recipe, my next recipe is, is gonna smash this one out of the park. So we are gonna do a blackened Cajun chicken donut and then it's gonna be filled with the black garlic ketchup and a Cholula mayonnaise. Not to mention, it's gonna have a dehydrated corn crumb and chicken skin outside. Oh, my, you're Just saying. chicken skin? Just saying. Like fried chicken skin? Like fried chicken skin. That's like one of my favorite things to do is it's, like, you know, is it's when incredible. I, I brine the chicken skin, then I, let, then I kind of let him out and let them all dry, and then I throw them in a fryer and you just crumble that stuff on, oh my gosh. It's better than this guy. It's better than poor crackling, yeah, man. Yeah, this guy. It's 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 amazing. Can you hear that? It's so good. Um, <laughs> and then also uh, dehydrated some um, sweet corn. So we've got some tiny little sweet corn pieces um, that have just been put in an oven on a really low heat um, overnight, uh, about sort of 12 hours, um, and then they just nicely dehydrate. Then what I've also done is I've confied some chicken thigh in the blackened uh, Cajun rub from Swartz, um, and that's delicious just by itself. But then what we've also done is we've put those flavors into the crumb. So the crumb that we're gonna be putting on the outside of the donut, that's also got a touch of that Cajun in there, it's got that crumb, it's got the chicken skin. So it's all gonna go nicely on our donut. Because I'm not exactly a baker, I have cheated. These have been made for me by my baker, who's, <laughs> who's done a much better job than I did. Um, and then what I've done, I've just heated that chicken through. So I confeed that chicken, used the skin, so we didn't waste any of the animal. We used some really, really good uh, quality raised chicken. And then we're just gonna heat that through. We're gonna heat up our donut. Be careful, that's a hot heat, buddy. Yep. I'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, you watch my Look, donut, love it. we're grill marks on a donut. Didn't think I'd be grilling donuts today. But there's probably some sugar on Who there, knew? so. So, what, what we're gonna do, uh, we're just gonna snip into the donut, twist it open, and then we're gonna pipe our filling through. Um, so we're gonna have that filled donut, but with a, with a meat scent. Do you need any more heat on that, or are we okay? A little warmth would be good. A little Basically, bit more warmth. We, we just wanna make it sticky, that's what we wanna do. Okay, I can make it sticky, sticky, icky, icky. So. Comfy chicken, all ready to go. Cut the end of that way. We've got a little extra Cholula mayonnaise. So we've got about a 20% Cholula on a nice free range egg mayo. This seems a lot more complicated than mine. I think you won on this round. Well, you see, Christian's always gonna be good with the barbecue, right? It's what he does. So I had to bring in a few extra levels. <laughs> Couldn't just leave You had it. to go hire an alchemist, a wizard, <laughs> and a conjurer for yeah, next level flavors. Literally. So what we do, we're just gonna snip into that donut, and then we're gonna twist those scissors in to make a nice little pocket in there. Pocket. Pocket, mate. I love the way you guys talk little over pocket, here. Everybody mate. talks funny in this country, it's great. I'm gonna put in a little extra black garlic ketchup and lots of that Cholula mayo. It's jumping out at me already. And then I'm gonna get that meat filling. I am not worthy. There. I am not worthy. And because that's going everywhere, I'm just gonna dry that off slightly. And it's gonna go through that amazing crumb. So, 
Are you okay. done yet? Am I done yet? No, not exactly. You still going? I'm still going. Seven minutes, man. Okay. Seven minutes. All right. I can go quicker if you need more time. <laughs> so, we've got the when, crumb when on the donut. When do we actually get to wrestle? Do we get to wrestle with this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm just gonna come off the top rope. <laughs> okay? I'm not, you can't see me, okay? I'm just gonna take you out. This if is you for the drama, yourself, right? I'm sorry. This is for the drama. I'm you gotta telegraph every I'm move. I'm slightly worried now. Yeah, I'm, I don't bounce like concerned. I used to. So yeah, so we've got our blackened Cajun donut with Cholula mayonnaise. We've got the um, black garlic ketchup in there. I've got some pets somewhere too, which I'm gonna find. There we go. These pipettes are huge. They've got tons and tons of sauce in them. Oh. Wait, wait. This seems like the end of the, of, of the whole session kind of recipe. I mean, uh, I hope you're gonna be able to step it up from here, because... Well, uh, can, 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 can I give that a little... You can go twist. Yeah, yeah I saw this. Let me give it a little... little... Get a little some color on there. That up. A little charred up. Okay. But yeah, so that's my dish. Black and Cajun chicken donut, people. I think we can go home now. Yeah. Thanks well, for I'm, watching. I'm done. That was all my skills Thanks. in one pot. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'm pretty much spent now. Okay. Wow. Yeah. They I've... said start strong. That's what they said. They said start strong. Round, round one is you. Yeah. Round one is me. Okay. Oh, perfect. So round, it's a perfect start. Round Quite two, frankly. three, and four, I shall destroy you with. <laughs> and there's nothing better than a, a cheese steak. I used to like, this you know. This is true. I used to go to Philadelphia like every time The Cure would play just to get, to see The Cure live on the disintegration tour, see pictures of you live, and then I get to watch, I get to eat a Philadelphia cheesesteak. So we've done a vegan and a vegetarian version of it, and we're gonna start with, it's Old Bay. Old Bay's the key. So we're gonna make our Old Bay kind of bath for the mushrooms. So we take Leo the leopard, and we take our lovely Old Bay, and we, you know what? I'm gonna go to the illegal side. Boom! You ever seen that with your carton of milk, the old cartons of milk, when you, it says open on this side, <laughs> and, and you try, and then it just gets all, cause it's all been wet, it gets all, it's all lactomagulated. You have to go to the illegal side to open up your milk. Lactomagulated. Lactomagulated is a word. You can use that if you if want. If you can get that in Scrabble, then you've won. <laughs> Don't play me in Scrabble, no. my friend. I will destroy you as much as you destroyed me in that first round. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got our Old Bay, Little bath, just to get things going, a little bit of fat. So, sorry guys, just while Christian's doing that, I'm gonna sneak in here. Are with, you going dirty? I'm going dirty. Here, I'll get this I'm, for you. I'm gonna sneak in with an Old Bay plaited hanger steak. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But that wait, 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 hold that up, you planted that? Of course I planted it. Okay, let me build you a coal bed. You have to do a, a tight coal bed. Thank you. When you're doing this kind of stuff, it, okay? So yeah, so we're, we're literally just going straight on the coals with this. We just wanna blacken it up. Mr. Strom? Yep, throw it on. Uh, I'll look after it. Cool. Perfect. She's in. Sorry to interrupt you guys. No, no, just you, had to get you that gotta in. You got to get your things gotta in Got to get that steak in there. And people think that steak's just going to burn. And I know I'm kind of jumping onto his meat bit, but it's, it actually suffocates because there's no he's, combustion. He's good at the meat bit. To, for, to, to really burn the meat. So it actually, you build a really good base and a char. It's an efficient way of cooking. Okay, yeah. so there's our bath. There's our Old Bay bath. Then we just give our field mushrooms or our, oh God, it smells. Just smell that bath. Can we swim in it? Yeah, we're gonna go swimming we're in gonna it later. We're gonna go swimming in the bath. Earthy goodness, so we give- That does smell really good. We give really our good. mushrooms this lovely, lovely glaze. There you go, you can see that. Mm. Goodness gracious, great mushrooms of fire. Uh. <laughs> Just made that up myself. No, I like you know? it, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it, can, can we sing the song? Can we afford it? I don't think we so can. You can hum maybe 15, 15 seconds okay. of it. No, 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 no. Okay, so this is gonna give everything a head start. Now, if you want to make this really easy, you can take your, your, your green peppers, your red peppers, yellow. I, I cook like a traffic light, you know? Eat a rainbow, my friend Color. would say. Color. Yep. So you can put them all in a frying pan, like so. Throw them on there and just cook everything and then dust it with Old Bay. I like to give the mushrooms a bit of a head start and then slice them up, throw them in the pan, and then you build the sub. So I'm trying to- Flavor on that grill, right? Dude, there's flavor in the grill, there's yep. flavor in the, in the coals, and you know, 
there's no flavor in gas and electricity. So a lot of our processes, you know, we've, we're building fire, we're building flavor, we're building smoke, we're building yeah. sweet smoke yeah. flavors. And that just adds a whole new dimension to your cook. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, Old Bay's got that earthiness. It really works with live fire cooking. So like I said, you can get some oil in there, peppers, onions, all the above, and then slice your mushrooms or start them like I'm doing. And then here's, here's one I made earlier. And this, we, we, this is one of those sandwiches I can just inhale. And I, I always say digestion starts in the mouth with mastication, okay? But I, sometimes I just forget. And I, it's just it, one of those, a nice soft ro roll toasted. All those lovely veggies you get, but we're gonna use the mushroom as the main player as like the kind of meat. And the thing is, mushroom ain't a veg vegetable. It doesn't produce by photosynthesis. It just, you know, it takes its, its nutrients differently. So it's like the closest thing I can get to meat and umami. So there we go. Philadelphia Old Bay mushroom cheese steak. Okay. Oh, okay. A little now, bit of mayo. That, yeah, that, that I could eat. I really could. But uh, if, if we're doing a Philly cheese steak, then we need a meat sub, right? It's the classic. Yeah. So the, the hanger steak is in. Do you mind flipping it over? Oop, Thank you very much. Smoked garlic for later. And then I'm going to need a small bit of pan space. And if you thought I took long on the last one, watch this one. All uh, right. Might have burned a steak because I was doing my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> no cheating. No cheating allowed. So um, what I'm going to do, guys, with dirty cooking that hanger steak, if. Um, what have I done with your thermopen? I got it, I got ah, it. I got a thermopen, don't you worry. So Chris is gonna look after my hanger steak for me. Um, and I wanna try and get the internal temperature about 50 degrees. We wanna try and keep it. Still got a while yeah, to it's go. It's looking good, it's looking good. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. get the pan on if I can. You know, I'm gonna put that there because I need it. I need it. Beautiful. I need some space. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a dirty cooked Old Bay hanger steak. So I took that hanger steak and I married in it Old Bay yesterday. So it's been marinating for 24 hours in Old Bay. And then we're gonna dirty cook that till it's blushing. I've got a nice sourdough baguette. And then we're also gonna make a bit of mac and cheese to go in our sub, because I can. Um, <laughs> can I have a bit of Leo? You can oh, have a bit of Leo. Leo. We might need some more Leo. Can just, I get some just, more Leo? Just a touch Olive of Leo, oil, please. Just a touch. Just wanna to loosen that pan up. Yep. Um, I've got some cheese sauce that's gonna go in there. So uh, basic bechamel, nice and easy. And then because we want these smoky flavors, we want that lovely um, sort of difference to our, to our sub. I've put in a smoked applewood cheese and I'm gonna add a little bit of extra of that as we go along. Can, can I have some of this to dip my chips in? No. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so smoked applewood cheese. Yeah, I've got the world's largest bag of mac. Just in case. I've seen bigger bags than Mac, man. <laughs> Don't be trying to claim that, brother. Um, yeah, so this, this will be uh, my daughter's dinner later because it's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, just warming through that bechamel and cheese sauce. Let's get a good bit of Mac in there. Okay, you're at 50, is it? You happy now? Beautiful, okay. beautiful, beautiful. Let it rest. Lovely. So a bit of Mac in there. Lovely. Then we got that smoked applewood cheese. Whew. We're gonna have gherkins going on in there because we want that little bit of acidity against it. Um, obviously the mac and cheese with the smoked applewood with the Dirty Bay hang hanger steak is quite heavy. So we wanna cut it up a little bit. So we wanna use a little bit of, um, we've got some cress and some rocket, which again is just gonna give us that little bit of cutting. Get my baguette opened up. And then I'm also just gonna warm this through. Do you mean to kind of open it up grill. and get it on there? Yeah, lovely. Thank lovely, you, Lovely, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, just heating up that mac. I'm gonna grab a touch of milk, just to loosen it back up. Where's your milk, buddy? And then we're gonna uh, box at the end, I believe. You put your milk in a box? Well, sometimes. Oh no, it's here, it's right here. Oh. <laughs> I'm good, sorry, mate. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So just loosen that mac up. Then we're gonna rock in some extra so, cheese. If I help you on this, does that mean I can win as well by beating well, me? <laughs> I, I mean, maybe. <laughs> no. Maybe. So cool. 
So that's our Mac, that's, that's nice and hot, that's good. Oh, it's also all over me. Now, the dirty cooked hanger steak. Look at this guy. I can feel the flex in there. It's gonna be lovely and pink. So let's cook it up. We're gonna have that baguette done in a minute. We've got these beautiful slices of hanger. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. That's the one. So the end bits are medium rare, the middle bits are rare. Exactly. And then maybe the, I might need to cook that a little bit, a bit more. <laughs> this, no, this is a butcher's cut. This is how um, you like it. But also, um, what we've got is we've still got heat going through there, so it's still gonna cook in that little pile while I'm assembling. Avengers Assemble. Avengers Assemble, who's your that? favorite Avenger? But you know what, Captain America is the dude, right? Okay, so I'm, he's the guy. Just to let you know, I'm, my final dish was cooked by Thor, and who does Charlotte Hansen play in Avengers? Hang on a minute, didn't uh, Black Widow? Black Widow. But didn't Madonna tell you not to name Madonna, drop? Dizzy Rascal, and um, said don't name and the drop. late David Bowie used to always tell me to quit name dropping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so guys, we just made a little little bed in here with the gherkins and everything else, some nice bit of greenery. Gonna have a little bit of Mac. You're really good at this, dude. I try, you know. <sighs> I thought, you know, I'm up against Christian. And yeah. He's, and he's good, so yeah, I need to. You've I got the crush that's me, man. I'm, I'm going ve vegan. I'm going plant based. I'm, I'm looking after the earth. Actually, but oh, me so, too. So me meat too. As well. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, we're using good, sustainable meats. Um, also, we we use meat that is grass fed. So this beef is fully grass fed, and that means that it's actually regenerative. Yep. It's sequestering carbon into our soils. Not all meat production is bad, so we support the right kind of meat production, and we're actually doing the right thing. And um, same, same with the charcoal. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the, yeah, the yeah. trees that, that, that are looked after by the woodlands, they're gonna sequester more carbon than what is released by cooking the food. Yep, yeah, for sure, for sure. Look at us talking se sequestered. I didn't well, think I'd say the word sequestered today. Well, there you go. Yeah, thanks for making me sound smart. Are you done yet or are you still going? <laughs> no, I'm still going. There's still more flavor to get on here. So we've got the smoked applewood cheese again. I've just put some more Cholula mayo onto my Old Bay dirty cooked hanger steak gherkins salad rocket flavor awesomeness i think you're too you're too it's two and oh right now are you going easy on me are you like building to the to the end i told you i got to score thor and um what's her name uh, black widow black widow working you, on my last you know recipe. when you go into a, a bar and uh someone says hey do you want to play pool like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll play pool you any good nah nah i'm not any good it's a hustle i'm hustling it's you a hustle okay are we done with this one now I'm done with this i'll clear this up okay so Good people of Earth, I'm gonna give you some very important information. The best chips in the world are my dad's chips. So I've worked with Jamie Oliver's food team. I've worked with Tom Carriage's food team, some of the best chefs in the world, and they come back to me and go, hey Christian, you know that, that chips recipe, French fries recipe you taught me, that your dad taught you? They're better than Jamie's. Don't tell Jamie I said that. They're better than Tom Carriage's. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna they text do, him right Tom now. does the triple cook. Jamie, Jamie does the double you? cook. I do a double cook, but I bring in the smoke and the flavor. So what I've done, here we go. The simple potato. I smoke it. So I go indirect. I've got my whiskey staves in there, the whiskey blocks. You can, I think we also did some hickory, a wild cherry. So we smoke our potatoes. Smoke bake is the word. And then smoke I let them bake. cool down. Nice. Let them get to room temperature. Then I put them in the fridge. Put them in the fridge, put them, put them in the fridge. <laughs> and then you slice them all up and you then deep fry them. So you've already cooked them once with the bake and then you deep fry them. We do these on the festival circuit out of our food truck, the loudest food truck in the world. And, um, but it's not an annoying loud food truck, it's a great food truck. We couldn't make these fast enough because they're so dang popular. Look at that color, that crisp. So it's got a bit of smoke, a bit of sweetness. So with the potatoes, it's how I cook them. Olive oil and then some sea salt, like a, you know, a, a kind of a coarse one, like a, a Malden. Then I indirect cook them, like about an hour and 10 minutes, so they get nice and you know everything's done. They're soft, chill them out, deep fry them, and then our dips. So you saw us at the very beginning today, we threw a bunch of veg. Let me grab some of these veg. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just show throwing them. in more veg as well. So no, uh, it's good. Me and Christian are, are both got dishes with these dirty cooked vegetables. These sort of ash kissed yeah. vegetables. Salsa negras, char charred veg ketchup. So 
what we've done with all these veg, you know, you might see that black, just peel that off. Get to the goodness underneath. Same with the onions. Before we cook at a festival, you know, we're doing like a 1,200 sandwiches a day. We cook, you know, big Spanish onions in the coals, just a, like 80 of them that we just throw in all the sandwiches. They, they go sweet, they go savory. They don't have that kind of over the top onion pungency. No. So yeah, it we, just caramelizes, it's lovely. It's gorgeous. So we char all the veg, you let it cool down, you peel them, and then we make this gorgeous charred veg ketchup, you know, a bit of vinegar, a bit of brown sugar, and then you can spike it with Cholula. So we're gonna Cholula spike our, Dave. our ch you know, this is quite spicy. I think we charged some uh, sous -vide. some scotch bonnets in there. And then you've got this, okay, now listen, I'm gonna give you a taste of this. Okay. You might need to have something to drink afterwards. Oh, cause goodness. This is gonna knock your socks off, okay? okay let me grab a spoon. So you take, there's your charred veg. Okay. So, I mean, I don't oh, wanna... Okay, we're good off the potato. There you go. Thanks, man. Okay, you might want to scrape some of that off. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a good hey, hey, and then mm. it creeps up on you. And then you have to take a seat down. That is so good. That's building. That yeah. went that went sweet. Then I got the barbecue, I got the char. Now I'm getting the little heat party in my mouth. So good, right? Oh. I mean I mean it's terrible. <laughs> so onions, peppers, so you know, good. chilies, so good. all that goodness, charred veg, get it in there, sugar, a little tiny bit of sugar, some vinegar, and then that's oh, one that's, that's delicious. Dip number so one. Good. Dip number two. Um, we smoked a bunch of garlic yesterday, and then we made a, a, a smoked Mate. garlic Jeez, mayo dip that we're gonna again spike with the goodness that is Cholula. Oh. God, that is so good, <laughs> so good. See, I, I kind of came out with you know two, you know, good recipes. Hustle. You came out swinging. Hustle. Now I'm hustling you with Hustle. my last two, but I'm, I'm going to bring about world peace with my fourth. Okay, so let's get a bit more Cholula in there. Bring it in, and then you've got. You ready for my my my, my second dip? The ladies' yep. pip. You fight for my delights. I'm the grandmaster of the three MCs. I shock the house, and um, your taste bud ease. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go. You on that? Me on that? That's you. Thanks, man. All right. And there we go with the smoked uh, garlic mm. mayo chalula oh. dip. Oh, oh, oh. That was good. No kissing for you tonight. <laughs> oh. All right. I think I could eat that bowl. It's over to you. And he's right, those chips are the best chips. They really are. Right, guys, so this one, big build for me on this one, no surprise. Um, what we've done, I've actually sous vide a bacon chop. This is no ordinary bacon chop. This is an old bay bacon chop. So, do you want you going, heat buddy? on that or do you want yeah, I'm just residual gonna, heat? I'm just gonna give it a good color. Right there then. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, so old bay bacon is now a thing. We did some, some tests with it and it is beautiful. It's the first thing we oh, kind of came up with when we were talking about this idea. So like, good. Why not an old bay bacon? Oh. So, so good. And talk to a butcher. And yeah, then he and, then, and then I didn't know what to put with the, uh, with the Old Bay bacon. So what do you have bacon with? Waffles. Oh, man. So we're going to do Old Bay bacon waffles. Um, we're going to hit that with a Chipotle Cholula sauce. Um, I was lucky enough to find some Chipotle <laughs> Cholula. Now, that is good. I mean, it's all great, but... The, the chipotle flavor is just something different for gives me, it you, works it, it really well. It gives you that smoke. Oh, it's beautiful. That smoky it's beautiful. flavor. So, we're gonna have chipotle cholula, we're gonna have some blackened pineapple slices. Should, am I cooking these right now? So I've pre-blackened these on okay. the grill. They've already been pre-blackened. The reason I've done that is because then I've soaked them in a spiced rum. Because we I can. love grilling pineapple. One of my favorite things to do is like a grilled pineapple salsa. Mm. But, and see, so you, You've already grilled them, and yep. then you soaked them in rum. Yep. Because you we keep can. showing off, because we dude. Can. Yeah. I'm gonna have yeah. to come off the top ropes and actually <laughs> land on you, take you out, because I've got one more, and then you still get the answer back, right? Yep. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, you know, I was I was hoping uh, that I would have had it won by the third round, but I'm worried by those chips. <laughs> They're, how, they're how so crazy good. Can a simple chip so good do that? I love it. Okay, so literally just slicing up some avocado. 
um, because we're going to have the um, sort of dirty cooked ash salsa going on here with the with the pineapple. Um, we're going to put through the avocado into it just to lighten it up. We're going to go over the top of it with some lime wedges. And again, I'm going to use that uh, Cholula. Cholula and the maple, it's going to work really well. Beautiful, thank you very much. Look at the fat dancing. Dancing now, fat. What, what veggies can I have? You can have any veggies you want, man. Okay. Do you want some so of the ones down I'm, there? I'm going to go for some of those tomatoes. Okay. I'm going to bring in a separate board that we can make a bit messy. Let me, let me get my tomato pie off. Just kind of get some more heat into it. Oops, just gave you guys the little hit on the, so I'm, I'm the gonna, winning recipe. <laughs> I'm scared about that one. <laughs> okay, so you want... Lie. So I'm, I'm going to go for those tomatoes down there. These guys, nice and blackened, just really warmed through. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. I'll take that. So basically going to leave a lot of this ash in there because I want it. I want it for flavor. I want it to be, yeah, that's beautiful. I'll take that bad guy. Okay. Yeah. I've also nice, got, I've also, nice, this nice, is a bit nice. more softer and cooler if you want yeah, that one. Beautiful. You can have one of my beautiful. earlier ones. Oh, thank you. Sharing is caring, you it know? It is. <laughs> it is. You said you would. So beautiful, beautiful bit of uh, ash going on in here and that's going to flavor this salsa. Like I say, I'm going to leave a lot of that in there. I want that. I want that barbecue flavor. That's going into my salsa. Nice long Dutch chili. All going up. Now, just to cut through some of this, I want a little bit of coriander. And I'm going to go over with some lime just to cut through it. And then somewhere around here. What are you looking for? Salt. Aha, found it. Is your salt black? Yes. Like your soul. <laughs> if I can get into it. <laughs> Damn these gloves. I might need help. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. You got him? So this is uh, charcoal salt. So this is going to bring even more barbecue flavor into there. So charcoal salt, and then again, I'm just gonna roughly, really roughly go over that. Gorgeous colors, gonna go through this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mate. mate. It's beautiful, that is. <laughs> so there we go, nice and chopped up. And then on top of that, again, like I said, just to cut through it, I'm gonna pop in some avocado. Just want that creaminess in there. Cut through. My waffles, I'm just going to touch on the grill. Plate. When do you want that bacon? That bacon I'll probably take now, thank you. Okay. With a fat dancing, buddy. Beautiful. It's a big chop. Nice. So we're just so toasting these bad boys? Toast them up, thank you. Bit of heat. They'll just need a bit of warming through. Okay. So, as I say, this bacon chop, I did actually uh, sous vide, so it is actually nicely cooked through. Just got a nice bit of colour from the barbecue here, and the bacon chop just slicing down. And this is a, a big portion, obviously. And we can do this in streaky bacon, we can do this in back bacon. Works really well all the way around. Nice. Look at these guys. Asbestos hands. <laughs> Asbestos hands for the win. So my bacon chop is going across there. I've got my dirty cooked ash salsa going on top. Then I'm going to come in with these blackened spiced rum pineapple pieces. Oh my gosh. It's a tough life, right? Man, you keep doing then this. We need, because it's bacon and waffles, You've got to have maple syrup. <laughs> I think my heart stopped. <laughs> this is healthy. There's veggies in there. Oh, I know it's healthy, man. But my heart's just like it's, and then it's blown away. Yes, the resistance. This chipotle, Cholula, hot sauce. Goodness gracious sakes alive, as my grandma would say, and she's Shh. the one that invented the next recipe. Dish number three. <laughs> there we go. Beauty. So this is so I'm probably all pimped out now because the next one scares me. Well, the next one is one of the most popular recipes from our second book. Um, this is Fire Food, came out in 2018, page 113 in the book. It's the only page I know, because it's my favorite photo. It is a good book. And, and, and the spoon in the photo, 
uh, we hired <laughs> in, and it's a beautiful spoon. So we're going to go to page 113. This is Appalachian food. If you're familiar with the chef, Sean Brock, uh, he wrote a book called Heritage. He champions Appalachian food. It's the Appalachian Mountain Trail that goes down uh, the East Coast, I think, from Pennsylvania all the way down to Georgia, Alabama, all that. And I, this is my grandma's recipe. It's kind of like a poor man's lasagna. And so instead of pasta, you got bread, day old bread, and then we've got uh, a cheese sauce with mayo, cheese, but you can also go vegan cheese. We've got some shredded um, onions in the sauce, and then we spiked the sauce with Cholula. So we're gonna actually hit these twice with the Cholula. This is the recipe, here we go. If you can get in on that. This is my grandma's That's... tomato pie. I know, it's the same it's one. same thing. Yeah. It's exactly, the... have you done this before? I, I actually froze that and we never <laughs> ate it and it's now, <laughs> Yeah, because it was so perfect in the book. <laughs> so we cook it a lot um, for at, at events, festivals, um, cooking classes, and it's such a favorite. And especially when you get that live fire flavor and you get that kind of crusty bottom, you know, because all the fats render, they kind of come through, and the cheese and the tang and that little hint of Cholula. It's just insane. So we would have big trays of it left over. Well, we would put it in the fridge, and then the next day, like, what do we do with the, the day old tomato pie? I know. <laughs> it's uh, it, Heat it up well, normally. We're, well, we would normally heat it up, and I do for the kids, but we thought we'd, we'd deep fry them. And we started deep frying them about a year ago, and we're like, oh, these are good. It's kind of like a southern fried arancini, if that makes sense. So it's got to be cold. You take it out, you know, and then you, you form it. You do, your, you do your egg wash. And then you deep fry these bad boys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little a look of what's inside the goodness that is the deep fried tomato ball. Oh, so there we go. See this this. gorgeous, gorgeous bad boy. Oh, man. And, and we did our own um, dirty ash salsa, like, you know, salsa negra. Yeah, so we nice, did that. So we've nice. got that one. We've got the charred veg ketchup. Then we've also got our ash salsa. So you can either dip that, you can even spike. The, the salsa with the Cholula. Um, but we've also got Cholula in there. Or just go straight Cholula on the uh, on the ball. Can I hand you a ball? Oh. Can I hand you one of my uh, deep fried balls? Not for the first time. Okay, good times. Um, we have made this recipe before. Family show. Yeah, um, here we go. These look incredible. So you can just give it a little bit of a hint that, that kind of sweet, savory, that, that kind of, sorry, mm. spicy, tangy, savory goodness. Arancini. Oh. That arancini. Yeah. Oh my God. I kind of like a straight Cholula. Oh, that is so good. Let me give them a good look at this, this pie. So good. This, the, the sum of its parts doesn't sound amazing. When you put them together, you ever had the corner bit of the lasagna or say the burnt ends of a brisket or the outside bark mm -hmm. of a pork shoulder, you know, slow cooked or maybe I kind of like that corner bit of pizza that's got the burnt bit. It's yeah. on the right side of bitter. The flavor. It's got the flavor. Yeah, so we basically deep fried those corner bits of lasagna into a kind of a southern fried arancini ball, you know, with our tomato pie. So that, my friends, is probably one of my favorite recipes that we just went crazy for the McCormick Sessions. And yeah, I think that wins. <sighs> And you lose, I mean, and you might want to go home, and uh, and then call me every day, tell me I'm I'm a superior person to your to you. So standard. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's just standard day for I us. I just like doing smack talk. The Macho, macho Man Randy Savage <laughs> is my favorite person in the world. Pour a little bit out for Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> yeah, that is that is good eating. <laughs> like I, again, I'm tasting that uh, the the barbecue, the the deep fry, the, the smoke, the, the smoke are so good, so mm. good. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna hook up the camera guys in a second with these deep fried balls of so, tomato pie goody, good gooey goodness. So the next one then, we got to battle that. Yeah, well, you know, you can, you can try, you can try, you can try. Right, let's get in a real mess then. Real um, quick, uh, we use panko egg wash. Um, there's other versions to make it vegan. Oh, we did uh, the coconut, um, the, the, the coconut yogurt. We worked with that as well to go vegan. Kind of like a buttermilk vibe, but with coconut yogurt, dairy-free. So there are alternatives. 
Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I just no, wanted no, to finish. I just wanted yeah, to make sure no, they know no, how we can go be veggie to vegan. And I, and I think that is a good thing because if you can't, uh, do you know what I mean? If you can't get the right source of animal protein or animal product, then don't use it. There we go. You know, if if your animal product isn't uh, produced in the correct manner, just don't use it. Go elsewhere. Do something different. So. For this one though, um, I am obviously going to use protein. I'm going to use a chicken and I'm going to use the Swartz uh, Sriracha. So again, I marinated my chicken thigh in a Swartz Sriracha seasoning and then we barbecued it up earlier just to get it pre-cooked. Can this I stop section. you for one second? Yes, man. I forgot one very important thing when I was doing the chips. I forgot to dust them with Old Bay. This is a problem when you're trying to do eight dishes. <laughs> yeah. Eight dishes. Then you did. this time frame. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next up for me is a version of a poke bowl. Um, so we're doing the Swartz Sriracha Chicken Poke Bowl. And this is um, a little bit of a play because it's probably the most unhealthy poke bowl I've ever seen, but it's a very tasty It's super one. healthy. It's, it, I mean, there's a lot of veg in here, so it is good. It is good. There's lots of, there's lots of color, so there's lots of good it's eating. It's healthy. Look what you've got in there. You've got oh, yeah. peas, rice, Beans, uh, pickled jalapenos. <laughs> yep, we, we got everything going on. So, um, let the, him see that chicken, man. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I've got so many elements here. That I can't I'm even see his chicken. Crowd in the plate. I can't see his chicken. Can you, get, can you see it? Okay, I'm just worried okay. about you Good. guys. So, yeah, so we got this lovely sriracha cooked chicken thigh. So again, you could you could pre-cook that, you could confit that, you could get it ready to roll. Um, I'm going in with some jalapenos down the side. You know, and, and when you confit, it just makes it a lot easier to kind of uh, hold and then cook. And that's kind of what we did with the uh, with the with the Old Bay yeah. and butter cauliflower. And it helps head. push that flavor through. So it's going to push all the flavor into it as well. Um, I've made a little bit of pickling liquor. Is that what this is? Which, that was a pickle? That's pickling liquor. So I can get rid of this? Just gonna borrow that. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna run uh, some ribbons through it, just very, very lightly. I just want that acidity and that sweetness coming through the poke bowl as well. I've got some radishes, some carrots. We've got the pickle baby sweet corn. Then I've also hay smoked, hay and tea smoked some kimchi. Were you at like a Thai restaurant recently or yeah, doing? This, yeah, but I'm loving all these things, all these fermented foods, like fermented, and then take the fermented food and then smoke it. Man, it's good. Just umami it's really bombs, good. oh, smoky goodness. Yeah, absolutely, everywhere. Um, I should have pre cut my avocado, but I didn't. I can do your avocado for you if you want. Oh, that's good. You you helped me too much. <laughs> yeah, did I? I? Feel like I cheat too much. <laughs> did I? So. Uh, just to finish off this, we're making like a clock face. We're making a bit of a, a visual dial. Uh, for just, the just real quick, like Simon is the team captain. He wasn't when it, when they got fourth place, but then after they did so well, because he oh, did no, this meat cake, coming. Oh, no. and and he, he was they were so excited because we were releasing oh, a video at the same time we that were. day because we because we he yeah. he was debuting it at the World Butchering yeah. Championships yeah. in Ireland. And then once he debuted it, because he didn't want the competition to see it, you know? Nope. So we did this meat cake. Like it was all like, you know, it looked like a beautiful cake. You know, had the lovely icing, but the icing was lard. It was, yep. And then flowers and stuff. Yep. And then kind of the, um, what was the what was the meat center? So the meat set, so we had the, the top side, the beef top side. We had the uh, pork fat outside. We had the haggis and caramelized onion center. Like a cake. Yeah. So <laughs> That's a bit more savory. So he does it at the World Champs, wins, gets all excited, but he was so stressed because he was like, you know, expanding his bu his butchery thing and he's got two young kids. Had a, a heart attack. Yeah. Had a heart attack. A he was, and But you know what? He's, he's fit and healthy now. He's fit and healthy fit now. And he's got to take now. his pills for life, but I he's do. fit and healthy. And, and, and he's still one of the top butchers on the planet we know Thank called Earth. Thank you. 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 So, Poke bowl finished. I'm just topping off a confit some uh, egg yolks, and then I put them through uh, white wine pickling liquor. Oh my God, you won! And uh, also went on top of that again with that that Cholula mayo. I just can't escape the the Cholula flavor on there because it brings the heat, cuts into it nicely. It's got that heat and that tag, yeah. which is what I like. Yeah. And then you got the chipotle one, which yeah. brings the heat, the tang, and the smoke. Yeah. So. Boom. That's my dish. So we had the Sawart Sharatsa chicken thigh. We got the um, Cholula mayo going across there. Got all sorts of goodness and fun. <sighs> dish number four. You did it, man. 
I, I, I really think you, you won this one. And I appreciate you going on easy, easy. <laughs> so, uh, I did. You these, did go easy on I've me. I've been cooking. I mean, those are good. For, for, those are good. For I, two days to make these bad boys. I think, I think the great thing here is that uh, you guys don't get to taste it because then that might be a different story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you have our four lovely recipes. You know, when I describe Obey, it's, to me it's the Black Keys, it's the Rolling Stones, it's that base, it's that earthiness, that savoriness, that paprika, the, the, the celery salt, the crushed bay leaves, the sugar, that is the taste of home for me. And then yeah. you've got easily one of my favorite uh, hot sauces, Cholula, it's got the tang, it's got the heat, it's got the savoriness. I'm, I'm addicted. Yeah. Addicted I'm, to that Cholula. It's funny, when, when they called me, I was like, you don't need to send me any. I've got like three three bottles in my, in my cupboards, man. I, I I love that stuff. Okay, so questions. If you guys want to ask Simon, yep, on one of the top butchers or myself, DJ Barbecue, uh, we'd love to heed them. Okay, here we go. How did you plat the steak? Can you do it yourself or ask your butcher to do okay, it? Okay, let's. If we roll on to the next question, I will be back. Okay. So and also, if you do have. Um, Someone in your family that's got you know long hair and you braid it, it's pretty much the same thing. So he's gonna get a steak out, he's gonna braid it for you. But yeah, if you practice on your daughter's or your son's long hair, true, I, you know, true, true. Um, and he's gonna do it. Okay, so he's gonna plat the steak. You can actually do it right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we're gonna do it now. So no time like the present. Why not? So we got the hanger steak. Uh, we're gonna cut it into three strips. We're gonna keep the top hole and cut three strips. So nice and even strips. And what this does, this also reduces the cooking time. So when we're doing something like a dirty cook, that was on there for what, five not minutes? Not that long, man. Not, not long at all. I probably could have had it on for about another two minutes, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it, it could have had a little more, Sorry but it was, that. no, it was good, it was good. Um, so what we do, cut th three strands like so. Or you can go more. You can go more. That's a lot more It gets a little bit more technical. <laughs> but outside goes in, outside goes in, outside goes in, outside goes in. You know where I'm going with this. So we go all the way down. We have one braided hanger steak. Okay, so can I cook that and, for oh, lunch? Yeah, absolutely. I'll bay that up. Let's all bay this bad boy yeah. up. Yeah. Gotta be careful, there's a little bit of sugar on the old bay, so you don't wanna hit it with too much of a hot get a bit of. What, what I like to do is, um, if you can get this in the marinade uh, early doors, so if you get this in uh, at least an hour before, let that, let that old bay really kick in. Oh, do you know what, I'm gonna redo it. You're gonna redo your thing? Okay, I'll do the next, next question. question. You next question. get on the grill, get on the grill. So we can feed the crew. Here we go. What do you think is the next big thing in plant-based food? I really think people are gonna be doing more live fire cooking because it adds a whole new, new dimension and flavor. And like we showed you, we went dirty, we went yep. cold roasted. You get another depth of flavor um, cooking that way. So plant-based is also trying to find more kind of plant-based like, you know, because it's hard to do the, a good vegan cheese. Yep. You know, that's always yep. a challenge. So, and, you, and you've even on your veg, you've got to try and be sustainable. You know, yep. try and look for the right farming. Just because it's a, a carrot doesn't mean it's the right carrot. So make sure you're picking out the right. Well, one. you know, it's funny. I I I, I, I host a, a festival called Meatopia, and we had the guy from Groove Ramada on on there, and he was a vegetarian for 20 years. Yep. And then he realized that the land where his cow ate. He found that eating that cow was more vegetarian than eating the vegetables off of his, Absolutely. his neighbor's yeah. Yeah. farm that didn't have any yeah. nutrients in the ground. So it's all about, you know, you know, buying the right veg, the, the right, right produce. Source. The right source. And then again, moving over from that, it's you don't have to eat meat. You know, if if you're just vegetarian, obviously you can get some really uh, well sourced produce. Yeah. But looking at the vegetables, things like the celeriac. Oh man, well, I'm, I'm taken away by how good that is. Sweet, as a dish. celeriac, it's those kind of root vegetables, big root vegetables that you, you can slow cook like you yeah. would, like a pork shoulder yeah. or a Same brisket. Yep. There we go. Um, but yeah, I think plant-based food, you're gonna, you know, the burger phenomenon's happening, the plant-based burgers, um, stir fries, all that kind of stuff. But I really think it's how you cook the veg. Fruit, they also love live fire cooking. I'm mm. always like, Grilling, you know, lemons and and limes just to add a bit more depth of flavor. That kind of sweet tang. Yep, apple goes nice. Apple and from being a butcher, yeah, a bit yeah, of pork. Yeah. Yep. Apples, peaches, yep. all that, man. Yep. Okay, question number three. How are we doing for time? We oh, doing how all do right? How do you make your pickling liquor? So nice, nice and simple, really. Just go half and half. So half sugar, half vinegar. It's as simple as that. And then just test it. So uh, the red wine 
pickling liquor that I made, that was literally 50-50, simple. The white wine was a bit too acidic, so you just add in sugar until you get that sweet spot. You want the sweet, but you want the cleansing of the and acidity. And you don't want it too sweet. No. You don't want to have that. No. You, you know, I kind of like going with a pickle where it's almost like too tangy. Yeah. Because as a kid, I would before I would leave the house, my grandma's house, I would load up my cheeks full of pickles. And that's how I sustained myself. Wasn't really good for my teeth. And that's how we got this way. Yeah. Uh, that's the moral of the story, people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I ever need a little tang, I just give a little bite and just yeah. suck it. But, and, but know, no, that, that, you, you do want that acidity because you want it to cut through stuff. So if, if it goes too sweet, it just adds on the palate. But you want that acidity to clean up. There so we go. So it's good for it. Okay, yeah. what's our next question? Any limits to what, you, uh, any limits to what food you can ferment? Uh, not, not really, obviously. Uh, meat is a different thing, charcuterie is, is a different project, but it's obviously doable. Preservation, really. Um, and not only preservation, but a lot of this stuff is good for, for gut health. So when we look at fermented foods, actually the, the effect that has on the body is amazing. Totally. And, I, and I do see that as something that's going to come in. That's like I say, while well, I'm using things like the kimchi, it's very good for you. Um, so yeah, I see it coming up. Good for the lot. gut. Yep. You can eat good, feel good, man. Absolutely. All right, you got another question Absolutely. for us. What barbecue trends are you seeing at the moment? So, uh, as we saw last year, everybody went to the backyard and they couldn't go anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, so that was it. Yeah, you couldn't get you it. couldn't get grills for love nor money, and it Still was just hard. nuts. My my Still friends hard. were making charcoal and they were selling out in five to twenty minutes their daily stock. It was crazy. So we got busy. Yep. And. Yep. I just, what you're seeing is people not just doing your sausages, your burgers, your steaks, and your pork chops. They're going slower cooks. They're going yeah. bigger cooks. They're yeah. using more indirect. And I think the key for, for grilling and, and barbecue is indirect. You know, have your zone set up so you, you have, like, in, you've got direct heat, so you've got that hot sear. And then have the middle bit where it's, like, still medium heat. And then have total indirect heat where nothing's over there. So you, like, cook your food yeah. to the right. Get the char, get yeah. the temp up. But, you know... Do, do a butterfly leg of lamb. Absolutely. Do, do, you know, yeah. And what Chris said, shoulder. this is so much more versatile than an oven. Yeah. You know, you put something in an oven, you've got one temperature. Like Christian says, you build your barbecue, you build your heat sections, your tempering sections. Use yeah. them accordingly. And then, and then you, when you put the lid on, you turn your outdoor grill into an outdoor oven. And you, you just play yeah. with airflow. So I think people are getting better at understand, just it's, doing more than just. It's good fun too. It's good fun. It's good fun. It's communal. It's it's outside. It's nice. It's good for you. Another thing that's good for you. And one of the biggest trends you're gonna you're seeing in barbecue really is plant based food. Mm -hmm. So way more books. I think this the number one book this week was a vegan barbecue book. Um, knocked me off the top spot too. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm celebrating plant-based food today. He's not Yay! bitter. It's never bitter. <laughs> I'm not bitter, man. But if you look in the in the charts on Amazon, other charts are available. Um, you'll see that probably I think three to four of those books are are plant-based. It's it's a hot trend. You've been up there a lot though. Yeah, I've been. Christian's been up that chart a lot lately. It's been going all right. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Uh, any more questions? We got time. Uh, our Chilies, uh, sorry, are chilies about heat or different flavors? That's a great question. Mm. Are chilies about heat or different flavors? Now, we used some Scotch Bonnet in this one, yep. but we used it, we de-seeded it, but we used it because it's got that fruit flavor. flavor. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have that, you know, punch you, knock you off your socks like a Naga, Naga Viper or, 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 you know, any of those kind of crazy yep. ones, the Reaper, Carolina yep. Reaper. And also, don't feel like you have to go up to those high ones straight away. If you start, you know, if you're into chilies, if you start on the milder chilies, you get the flavor first. Just be careful with the jalapenos, because apparently one in every seven goes rogue. <laughs> and it's like go. four to five times as hot as what if the... You've, uh, if you've had six and they've been okay, don't eat the seventh. <laughs> Just in case. That's it. Yeah. yeah if you, <laughs> play, rogue spice. <laughs> don't go for the rogue. It's real. Jalapeno. It's real. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, chilies, you know, and also taking out the pith and the seeds really helps to kind of like yeah. lessen the heat, but bring up the flavor. Yeah, because the flavor is there. The flavor is a massive part of the chili, and it is why we use it. Don't just use it for heat. No. Nah. You know, uh, there is flavor to it for sure. And, and the, the good thing about eating, eating chilies is it speeds up your metabolism, so you can eat yourself thin. There we go. Next question. Barbecue chilies for life. <laughs> is this the final one? Who do you oh. think won the battle today? I, I think I think we should just leave it for the people to decide. Bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. 
you, you, you Thanks, did man. better. Thanks, man. You, well, I, you did way more process. You know, than you I, did. I, I worked on it for like three months. So <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> you did well, boy. <laughs> and he's, he's my butcher, you know? He's one of my butchers. I'm very proud of but him. I, but I love this. I love food. Like, yeah. we love food. We do. And, 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 and we love, and Christian loves grilling. And this is like relatively a new world to me. But the flavors you get from grilling your foods and adding in rubs and spices and sauces. It's just good fun. Yeah, and just you, love doing and it. And you nailed it with layers and layers of food. But listen, folks, we are out of time. We want to say a big thank you on behalf of McCormick. Uh, thank you for joining us for the McCormick Sessions. I'm DJ Barbecue. I'm Simon the Butcher. And you guys are awesome. Make sure you go thank fast you. and take chances. Remember, you can't get hurt in the air and speed your friend. That's when you're on a mountain <laughs> you're snowboarding, you know? But you then you hit the ground and it does hurt. Yeah, yeah. Be careful. Be careful when you're stopping. Thanks, Bye, guys. guys.